I heard about his healing of his cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again. Say, cause the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Sing it! Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. Sing it out! He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Amen. Amen. On the last. Everybody knows it. Come on. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in gold. Amen. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angel singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day, it's going to happen one of these days. Woo! Victory. Come on now. Oh, victory. Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me, saved, and he bought me with his redeeming love. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. Amen. Good to see everybody out for Sunday school today. I see a bus is rolling in out there and uh, business is fixing to pick up in here uh, this morning. I, I'll never bring my phone to the pulpit. I'll leave it on my off on my desk, but I brought it up here in case one of them wrecked or had a had a flat tire or, or a problem. And as of right now, I don't see it. So uh, this thing, the you, you, best thing to do is don't fool that phone during church. And don't let your kids. Uh, that's uh, not good. Not good. Uh, let's uh, enjoy the Lord today. Let's get a blessing. Let's everybody get something from God. And I want you to pray. We are going to pray tonight, uh, this morning for all of their physical safety. And we got a lot of people coming in here this morning, y'all. I mean, there's there'll be people on, on drugs. There will be people separated from their families. There are people in trouble. There's people here coming this morning hoping it will give them some help, money for groceries. There are people coming this morning just, you just wouldn't believe it. You just would not believe it. The, the, and so we as a church, this is not a club for saints. It's a hospital for sinners. And most churches get the idea of it's not a spiritual club where all the saints get together and no we get together but that's not our purpose our purpose is to number one exalt the savior number two evangelize the sinner and then number three edify the saints all the three of that that's the purpose of a church and everything a church does is a means to that end all this stuff you see up here this this morning uh there's a reason for this I wish you could see the gifts in here. There's a million little ones down in these bags and stuff down in there, just boxes and boxes uh, of gifts. There's uh, there's uh, almost five thousand dollars worth of stuff up here, and uh, I appreciate all y'all that give. Now, the reason for this is, of course, we want them kids to be happy. Of course, that's it. But that's not the that's not the main reason. The main reason is they'll get here and they'll know the church loves them and they'll know God loves them. And as many will be saved today, right here. I'm praying that somebody's life will be changed permanently by God, uh, this service today. I mean that. That's, that's big talk for a little guy like me. But I got a big God. Amen. Big God. So we're going to pray. And then I'm going I'm to use my little one, uh, Dylan. And then we got some real special things lined up for you this morning. Please pray. Uh, thank you for everybody that helped out yesterday. We had a lot of visiting. We had a lot of visiting. And it's... 
I'm it, I'm always nervous when there's this many kids running in and out of there and it's raining and them buses. Pray the devil will be held back, please. That he'll be held back away from this place this morning, and and the Lord will help us. So um, we got a lot lot to be praying for. A lot of folks that are sick, not able to get out. Nasty, nasty weather outside. It's cold and rain all day. But you better be glad it ain't about 10 degrees colder. Uh, we'd be getting about a foot, and we don't want that on Sunday. No one on Sunday. Uh, take, we'll take it another day, but not Sunday. So uh, praise God for the rain. We need it. We're still about 10 inches behind where they should be right now on the, the level or however they figure that. So thank God for it. And uh, let's just enjoy the Lord today. They got real special Sunday school classes today. And uh, they're doing something real special in the teenage class and the, and the other classes so to, to reach boys and girls for Jesus. Let's do that right now. As we bow our heads and our hearts this morning, Lord, we thank you for this day we've looked forward to for a long time. A lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of prayer, preparation, and a lot of money went into making this service possible today. And I pray, God, that somehow it make some kid brighten up their day Lord, give them a little ray of hope. Let them know there is somebody that cares about them. And Lord, I thank you for all these people that help give money out of their pockets, Lord, to make this possible this morning. Thank you, Lord, uh, uh, I, for all this stuff up here, Lord. And I pray that you'd use it for your glory. I pray that you'd bless every single person that walks in these doors this morning, those that have needs. Lord, some of we know are coming. The, the two ladies we talked to yesterday, the, just getting off drugs and, and, and had to flee her, her place where she lived get away from it God the other ones Lord that was, uh, maybe coming this morning uh, those those girls that need our help this morning those, that young man that's all in trouble and in a mess And I pray God that you bring them all in here this morning and let them see a glimpse of the Lord Jesus Christ by faith Lord I pray for all those that are sick this morning not able to be here that you bless them I pray for all the buses that are coming in keep me safe Lord Please don't let the devil cause something crazy to happen, Lord. I plead the blood over this service today. Oh, God, do this for Jesus' sake, we ask. Lord, we know you're able. And I pray you keep your hand on this place today. And, Lord, I ask you, God, that you bless all our listeners from home and everybody uh, back home or on, watching online this morning. Lord, bless them. I pray that you'd make somebody's day just a little brighter. Save that one which is lost. Bless all the preachers and pastors and churches and missionaries around the world. Help them, God, to get the job done you've given us to do. And, Lord, come soon and take us out of this world in the rapture. Take us home to be with you forever. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Help us to live faithful before you till that day comes. Lord, whatever you do here this morning, we'll give you the glory and honor for it. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen. All right. Turn to John chapter 1. Amen. There right, you go, Dale. John chapter number one. It's getting warm real quick in here. It'll be hot before we know it. So we'll we'll make sure these are uh, not going to burn you up here this morning. And uh, let's all just get our Bibles open there. John chapter number one. That's Saint John, the Gospel of John. They call it. And uh, we'll get right into our lesson this morning. And Several years, uh, I've, I've made a sort of a little lesson out of this, and it's it's uh, it's fascinating to me, fascinating study. And um, John chapter one, um, it says, "In the beginning was the Word." I heard a preacher talking about this, and he's saying, "You know, we all talk about uh, we all talk about in the beginning, and we think of Genesis." When you hear somebody say in the beginning, you think of Genesis. And that's when God made everything. But you know what he said? He said, John started out in the beginning and went on back before creation. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. And, and that was before God even made anything. So this goes back further than the Genesis account of creation when God just started making stuff. Before that, before that, the Word was with God and the word what? Was God. Boy, I'm telling you, the liberals have a, 
uh, mental breakdown when they hit a verse like that right there. What does your Bible say? In the beginning was the Word. Is that the first verse? And the, uh, and the Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And the Word became flesh. What verse is that? Four? Oh, I'm sorry. It jumps on down out of 14. And the Word, capital W, became flesh and dwelt among us. What a weird thing. Isn't it, isn't it funny that the Lord called His Son the second person of the Godhead a Word? That's a weird thing to call somebody. It's a Word. A Word's what we say to communicate. Uh, so there's a lot in that. Ain't no... Ain't nobody could have wrote that Bible but the Lord. I mean, that thing, you know that's inspired. Who would have come up with that? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Hey, Casey, is that you? I just We just prayed for you. and that, <laughs> We visited them yesterday, and they got on that bus. You are a special guest today. You don't want me to embarrass you or nothing, do you? Uh, well, this, this is our Sunday school class. I'll give you a Christmas present here if I can find you one. Need a bike? Um. Uh, Y'all make them two ladies welcome back there. We talked to them yesterday out visiting. But anyway, uh, that word was with God and the word was God. That's a strange thing to say. You know, my goodness, y'all. Think about that. Uh, think about that. Let's, let's say, let's talk about that a little bit. So in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And then that word became flesh. So there can be no doubt what that's referring to. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. You remember when the you know when he's born, they said this is Emmanuel. That means God with us. God with us. Emmanuel means God with you. He's here with you. And now he's in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so so Jesus was God. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a lesson this morning on that the word becoming flesh. While, while we're in our Sunday school class, then I'm going to preach in a little while, uh, if it's the Lord's will. So what I what you like to do, many of you heard me do some similar to this before, but I'll maybe hit a little bit different angle of, of the comparison of the W-O-R-D, capital W, and the W-O-R-D, little w. The Word. We believe the Bible is the Word of God. And the Word became flesh. Remember old... Y'all remember old Jack Van Impey and some of them people, people say he's a walking Bible. And what they meant was he had learned, he'd memorized so much of it, he got, got a nickname of walking Bible. Listen, here's the walking Bible, Jesus Christ. He was the word in flesh. There's your walking Bible. Good night. Can you imagine every word in here and it's in, and it's in him and he's walking around. So when the baby was born in, 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 in the manger, and here's, a, Mary, we got a manger here somewhere. But they've done been here with all the gifts. But uh, Mary's here, Joseph is here, and the baby like this. And that was God in flesh and grew up and faced all the problems we faced, all the temptations we face, all the burdens and trials that me and you go through, all the, uh, the fears and the dread, physical pain like me and you face. The Bible said he is tempted in all points like as we are. So... He knows what you're going through today. He knows what you're facing. He knows how it feels to hurt. He knows how it feels. I mean, they killed him. They crucified him. You know, I heard, I heard the preacher this morning talk about the baby in the manger, and he said, uh, you know, public opinion was on Jesus, uh, and they, they killed him for what he said to the Pharisees and the scribes and rebuked them and told them he's the way, truth, and life, God, and that's why they killed him. But you know what? They tried to kill him before he even said anything. When he's a baby... Herod sent a man out there to kill all the babies under two years old. It's a natural, instinctive hatred for him. Now, if you want to know why the news media will talk about religion and God all day long, but will never say Jesus Christ, is because a man's sinful nature hates the Lord Jesus Christ. And they don't love him. That's, that's a phenomenon. That's a phenomenon. Uh, it's the same with them Jews. You know, people wonder about those Jews. Why? Why do everybody, people in the world hate Jews? And the reason it is because they are God's earthly, earthly chosen people. And something naturally, instinctively uh, don't like them. And so uh, my, my lesson this morning 
is to give you a little comparison between the written word and the living word. The written word and the living word. Now, first of all, we see that Jesus Christ had two natures. He had two natures, human and divine. Clearly, clearly, there's no doubt about it. He's the God-man. He wasn't half God and half man. Now, you, you can't explain it. He was all God and all man. He was, he was ever bit God and ever bit man. He was, uh, and he showed, his, he showed his two natures over and over and over and over. As a man, he went to a wedding. As God, he turned the water into wine for them who didn't have any. See? As a man, he slept in a boat. That was his man, human nature. But as God, he got up and told the waves to lay down. See, that's God and man in the same body. As a man, he was tempted to sin. But as God, he sinned not. Never committed one sin. You know, there ain't never been but one person in the world that didn't sin. And that wasn't your mom. And it wasn't you. It wasn't your blessed old grandma. Uh, I've, I've heard, I've, I know people that, I don't know people that, I don't know if I've ever heard them admit they was wrong or sin or anything. Uh, that's, that's a pitiful way to live your life. But the truth is, we've sinned. And I don't mean 10 years ago, neither. Amen. There ain't nobody here would want all your doubts and fears and wicked thoughts and everything to be shown on this screen right here from the past week. All your hatred, all your jealousy, all your pride, all your self right No, no. Only one man ever lived on this earth that did not sin, and it was the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, 1 Timothy 3.16 your Bible says God was manifest in the flesh. Now, we get you get a lot of criticism for taking a stand on this King James Bible, but the other versions don't say God. I think the new King James might it got that one right. It missed up on a lot of other ones. But the NIV does not say God was manifest in flesh in 1 Timothy 3.16. There's enough right there for me to say, I don't want it. I want this one. Why would anybody want a Bible that takes out a verse on the deity of Christ and saying God was manifest in the flesh? Why would anybody want a Bible like the NIV who takes away his deity in Luke 2.33 where it said, uh, and it calls Joseph his father. Do you know the NIV in Luke 2.33 said his father and mother? His father and mother marveled? You say, well, what does King James say? It said Joseph and his mother. You know why it says that? Because Joseph wasn't his daddy. God was. You don't want a Bible that don't have, uh, that don't say Joseph and his mother in Luke 2.33. You say, well, it says it in other places. But why would you want one that took it out one time? Can't you see the satanic work behind there trying, uh, the, we are not as many that corrupt the Word of God. Amen? You believe what you want to you about that. I'll take one that says God was manifest in the flesh. I'll take one that says uh, God, uh, it, it, that Jesus, that Joseph and his mother married. Amen? That's what I'll take. Now, you don't want a Bible that says God, that leaves out the word God in 1 Timothy 3.16. It'll say he who or who he or he who was manifest in the flesh. That, don't, that ain't nothing. Of course he's manifest in the flesh. I'm manifest in the flesh. You're manifest in the flesh. The King James leaves no doubt God was manifest in flesh. There's your right book. There's the way you know you got the right book. So the Jesus had two natures, human and divine. Uh, he was all God, so he could do anything. But he was all man, so he didn't do everything for his own advantage. You know, when he's on the, when they was getting ready to put him on the cross, you know what he said when they put him on there? He said, I could call 10,000 angels. Right now. We could change this scene right now if I wanted to. Don't think I, you've overpowered me. They, they didn't take it. I mean, they didn't overpower him and everything go wrong and they killed him. Brother, he, he laid that life down willingly for an old dog like me and you. And you know what he done? He said, I could call 10,000 angels, but he didn't. See, the God in him could have said 10,000 angels and put all them guys on the cross. But the man said, I'm going to suffer. To pay for it. Sorry, good for nothing, Danny Castle. And you. 
and pay for our sin. So he had two natures, human, divine. And then it said, the Word of God is like that. Did you know your Bible has two natures, human and divine? It's man and it's God, and it's God's Word. Now, you meet people say, oh, men wrote the Bible. See that? See that? You see the truth? That's partly true. Man did write it. But they were inspired by God, by the Holy Ghost, to men of God, as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So it has two natures, human, divine. Now, you've got to get that. You've got to get that. You see how smart the devil is? How many of you ever met anybody that said, well, just men wrote the Bible? Yeah, of course we have. Now, they, they got a hold of part of a truth. That's a half truth. And the devil will never tell you the whole truth. He'll tell you a half truth. Men did write it. But God inspired it. So it's wrong to say God wrote it up there in heaven and just dropped it down here. And it's also wrong to say men did it without him. They didn't do it without him. He didn't do it without them. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. But Ed Maccabee said that the plainest and clearest of any preacher I've ever heard, and it's stuck in my heart and I've never forgot it. He said the Holy Ghost got a hold of the head, the heart, and the hand of those men. And that's what inspiration is. Inspiration is. All of it. And you remember the Apostle Paul one time? The Apostle Paul wrote one time. He said, uh, he's writing a, a Corinthians or one of them group, and he said, uh, da, 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 and he said, but, but I speak this, not the Lord. And immediately people jump on it and say, see there, that's not inspired. Now hold your horses there. What he meant when he said, I wrote this, not the Lord, is there was nothing in the Old Testament. That's all he had that said that. And what he was writing, God was inspiring as he wrote it. So God inspired him to write that. You, you better be real careful before you put that book right there on the shelf and say, I don't believe it. That's the greatest book in the world, people. I ain't never been a book in the world could even come close to that right there. You know, there's been more people saved, more revival started, more uh, great moves of God through the teaching and preaching of the King James Bible than any other book that's ever been on the planet, including the originals. The original manuscripts never even was in one book. There's 1,500 years scattered out, 40 different authors, and God preserved it, and this is the finished product right here. You say, well, Brother Danny, I, I just can't believe. I, don't you believe other versions? Yeah, I'll tell you what I believe. I, I'm like that little girl one time. Guys said, which Bible do you use? She said, I use the one God uses. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. By their fruit. You shall know them. And the attack on the Bible today is just like the attack on Jesus. As a matter of fact, they go hand in hand. When people attack the Bible, they attack Jesus. Attack Jesus, attack the Bible. Your attitude toward one shows your attitude toward the other. And I can tell you how much you love Jesus this morning by how much you love your Bible. Same thing. He's a living word, that's a written word. You can't, you can't love one and not the other. That old country singer years ago, I mean, I was just a kid. And he'd go in and he'd say, he goes, get there and he'd say, me and Jesus, we got our own thing going. Me and Jesus, we got it all worked out. I mean, yeah, you nut, you ain't got nothing worked out. And what he, what he meant was him and the Lord had this special little deal. He didn't have to, you know, read the Bible, go to church. And I'm like, him and the Lord, he had a good, no, you and the Lord ain't got no little deal worked out. If you don't love that word, you don't love him. He is the word of God. Your attitude toward Him shows your attitude toward it. Your attitude toward it shows your attitude toward Him. It is impossible for a person to love Jesus and hate the Bible. Let me say that again. It is impossible for a person to love Jesus and hate the Bible. It's impossible. It cannot be done. Okay? Uh, Jesus has two natures. Human, divine. The Bible has two natures. Human, divine. Now, I've already said this, but quickly, Jesus Christ was and is perfect and without fault. The Bible, Pilate said, I find no fault in him. The Bible said, who did no sin, neither was any guile. They examined him up one side and down the other. Don't you know, brother, don't you know, if he had had a flaw, they'd have found it. Son, they went over him with a microscope, a, a magnifying glass. They, they, wanted, they couldn't catch him making a step out of line. 
They couldn't make, they couldn't catch him taking one step, wasn't right, saying one word that was off a little bit, saying anything. He, I find no fault in him. And they look for it too. Don't you doubt it. They had to make up stuff. They said, he said he's greater than Caesar. He said he this and that. He didn't say nothing like that. He was greater than Caesar, but he didn't go around talking like that. Uh, they, they, they found fault with him. You know what they said? They said, this man said, uh, if you destroyed the temple, he'd raise it up in three days. See there? See how you got to understand that Bible? If you don't understand that Bible, you'll come up with all kind of crazy stuff. Jesus didn't say this temple, like the temple, if they destroyed it, I'll raise it up in three days. He spake of his body, this temple. You destroy this temple, three days I'll raise it up. Nothing wrong with that. He did do that. But see, there's where you got to be careful reading the Bible, people. When you come to this book, you say, Lord, I'm just an ignorant little child. Would you please speak to me? May the Holy Spirit get your heart right. That's why you understand the Bible is getting your heart right. You don't, you don't come to the Bible with a superior, critical attitude like, well, I'm going to look in here and see if I can find something. Oh, the Red Sea. Yeah, they didn't cross no Red Sea. You, you ain't going to get nothing from God like that. You know, every once in a while I meet a teenager and they know that I don't, that I don't prove I'm going to a secular college. And I don't. I don't. You can believe whatever you want to. Ask the Lord at the judgment if I'm right. Ask Him. I ain't afraid to face God with that belief. Some colleges corrupt them. I'm not saying it's all wrong. I'm not saying God don't send something there for it. I'm not saying that. I'm telling you, they'll make an atheist out of them real quick. And uh, this, this girl boy, I went to college and, and, and she came to me and she said, oh, Brother Danny, it ain't all bad. I'm taking a religion class. And when they tell me that, I thought, you'd be better off studying evolution. That, them, honest to good, you know evolution ain't true. Them religion classes are designed to make you doubt the miracles of the Bible. We're going to study forever on ancient Egypt and how ancient, and the Pharaoh, and they and it written Willie the Red Sea and all that. That ain't religion class. That's an attack on the Word of God. Now, if they let some old Bible believing Christian come in there and teach the Bible and preach it, right? That'd be great. But you'll never get a job doing that. And y'all hear about that, that woman that runs Harvard making all that anti Semitic stuff and Oh, my goodness. And they were saying, are you telling us that genocide and, and killing Jews is okay? And she would never answer. She said, it depends on the context. And if people are, what she's saying was, if it caused somebody to really do it, that might be wrong. They don't take that stand on anything else. You can, you can make threats against other groups. And right then, buddy, you're hung. She is the president of Harvard University. Uh... So, so don't, don't, uh, there's Santa Claus right there. I've been waiting on you all day because I didn't get nothing. The Grinch is already here. Two of them. So, yeah, business picking up in here. I'm just, I'm just messing with you. Uh, but anyway, what was I saying? Oh, about, about the Word of God is without fault. They're going to try to find fault. I like, I love that story. I won't get all of it today, but I love that story where that old, country boy went off to seminary and uh, he's sitting in the seminary class the doctor got up and he was talking and he said well now he said now we come to the so called miracle of the Red Sea and I know all these old country preachers they get all excited and say well, God parted the Red Sea and all he said but he said we study and we have found out that 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 it really wasn't the Red Sea. It was the Reed Sea. And it was only four inches deep. And so the children of Israel went through their own marshy ground. And he told that story. And about that time, that old boy jumped up and said, Whoa! Glory to God! Hallelujah! Whoopee! He said, man, what's wrong with you? He said, praise God, it's a bigger miracle than I thought it was. He said, God ground Pharaoh and all his army in four inches of water. <laughs> now that's, that's stuff you run into when you start doubting them. It'll come back and bite you. It'll come back and bite you. Oh, did God really make everything in six days and night? Yeah, the world as we know it, yes. He sure did. He sure did. Uh, you say, well, what about them 20 million year old rocks? He could have made a 20 million year old rock in two seconds if he wanted to. Yeah, you better be careful. You better be careful. Don't let the world's intellectualism put doubt in your mind about that book. That was here before they got here. It'll be, it'll be here when they're dead and gone. Uh, heaven and earth shall pass away. 
My word shall not pass away. So Jesus was and is perfect. The Bible was and is perfect. You say now, preacher, don't you believe all we have is good and pretty good translations of the Bible? Well, if that's all we've got, we're in trouble. If I believed the only place the real word of God was in Greek, you'd see a whole country can't learn Greek. I'd get every book I could and I'd learn it. If I thought that was all the word of God was, if I didn't believe we had the word of God in English, I'd say, teach me Greek and we'll put it in English. See, God hath not, God hadn't forgot us. He preserved his word. The doc, see, the, all the Southern Baptists are fighting over inspiration. The Independent Baptists are fighting over preservation. Uh, years ago, they had a big movie in a lot of the Southern Baptist churches. Some of the higher-ups didn't even believe it was inspired to start with. And then the, they believed that there was errors in it from day one. Then the Independents came along, and they're fighting over the translations. And that's easy to settle if you study the whole subject and find out that all the new versions of the Bible came from a complete different set of Greek manuscripts than your King James Bible came from. And once you get that, once you get that, then it makes sense. It not, it's not just an update of the King James. Uh, it comes from a completely different set of manuscripts that leaves out hundreds of Bible verses. Hundreds, I mean literally hundreds of Bible verses. Um, so uh, don't forget that. Jesus Christ was and is perfect. Um, just like they find fault with Jesus, find fault with the Bible. Oh, oh. Atheist on TV, them people, uh, that old Bill Maher guy that got that old show on HBO. I don't have HBO. I don't watch him. I, I don't like throwing up. And I I don't. And uh, I I heard him on something. Somebody sent him on the phone or video or something. And he was saying, he was saying the most silly, ridiculous story I've ever heard is that God sent his son down here and he came as a baby in a manger. He said that was the most silly, ridiculous story he ever heard. Finding fault with the Son of God and trashing your Bible. Trashing it. So, that means this. That means the Word of God is hated. Jesus is hated. Hated by some, loved by others. Isn't it amazing how that people, there's people hated Jesus enough to kill him and there's other people love him enough to die for him? There ain't no middle ground with him. You fall down on one side or the other. Bible's the same way. You say, you believe the Bible? Well, I believe parts of the Bible are inspired. You mean the parts you pick out and agree with. That's what you mean. That's what people mean when they say that. Uh, I'll cherry pick the parts I agree with. It's like heaven and hell. The Bible said there's a heaven. The Bible said there's a hell. But you watch people. You watch people don't believe it. They'll say, well, that word hell is, you know, there's four, the Sheol, Tartarus, Gehenna, and Hades. Uh, Greek and Hebrew words, but they don't never worry about them Greek and Hebrew words for heaven. Heaven is just what it says. Woo! We're all going to be happy. Hell, no, I don't know if that's really what it says or not. See how you can't have it both ways? That book's a divider, y'all. If, if heaven's real, hell's real. If heaven's literal, hell's literal. You can't say one is, one ain't. Uh, so, so, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't see how people go to a church where the preacher don't preach on hell. I don't see how you stand that. I, I'm not, I mean, good. Not how in the world can you stand? If I, if I went to a church and my preacher never preached on hell, I think, what's wrong here? He either don't believe it or he does believe it and he's scared to say it because he might get run off and lose his paycheck. Either one of them a crook. Both of them's crook. Both of them's crook. Now, you listen to me. Uh, uh, he, if a man, well, a preacher guy came to me one time, he said, Danny, I've been thinking about coming to your church. And I said, come on, you're welcome. He said, I'll just be honest with you, preacher. He said, I've been going down here so now. He said, I've not heard the word hell mentioned one time in five years. Not once. And I said, well, come to our church. You'll hear it mentioned every Sunday in the right way or the wrong way. <laughs> Parking lot, restroom, somewhere. <laughs> but you'll hear it mentioned. I promise you. Uh, but the, the, the truth is, y'all, the truth is, one can't be real and the other not real. Like Joel Osteen in there going to say, well, Larry, that's not really our calling. 
Uh-uh. 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 If a man's called to preach, you know who the you know who started the hellfire preaching? Jesus Christ. That's who. He coined the phrase hellfire. So was he wrong? Did he not have a good ministry? It either real or it ain't real, y'all. It's either real or it ain't real. And, and brother, if the book's true, it's real. You better get saved while you can. You better get in while getting's good. Time's running out. You, if you don't know you're saved, you better get saved. He said, I don't believe in scaring people. That, you're showing your ignorance when you talk like that. Anybody's not scared, that's crazy. You see how, see what I just said is completely unpolitically correct and completely against every religion in this world. What I just said. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'm not going to give in and do that so they'll like me. I ain't going to do that. God saved me. He changed my life through this book right here. He's answered my prayers through the believing of this book right here. He's took care of me and my family through this book right here. And I ain't about to abandon it now for some liberals that don't agree with part of it because of their income. I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. I started out preaching on the street, and that's where I may wind up before it's over with. And that's fine with me if that's what God wants. Uh, listen, Jesus Christ was hated by some and loved by others. They hated him enough to kill him and loved him enough to die for him. Same with the Bible. They hate it. They hate it. I'll show you. I'm playing a video presentation for winter camp. You wouldn't believe it. Um, I'll show you how much they hate the Bible. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach on Friday night on how to prepare for 2024. On Friday night of winter camp, that'll be two weeks. It'll be one week from Friday night. And I'm going to show a video about how it, it, you just wouldn't believe the hatred, the uh, natural hatred toward the Bible and God and the things of God. So so don't forget that. All right, let me say quickly, and I'll, I'll let you go. We'll take a little, little break here for the preaching service. Jesus Christ saves you and gives you the new birth. Jesus Christ saves you and gives you the new birth. You said, now, wait a minute, Brother Danny. You're not going to tell me the Bible does. The Bible saves you and gives you a new birth. Well, you better read it. You better read it. You say, where's the Bible gives you a new birth? First Peter 1 Peter 1.23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. It's instrumental in you being born again. The word of God is. Uh, that automatically sets apart Christianity from every other religion in the world. Jesus said, I am the, not a, the way. Poor old Oprah Winfrey, bless her heart. She thinks, I heard her say this. She thinks that anything you really believe in is, quote, your truth. Now, look, she's smart and all that. But there is no such thing as your truth and me with my truth. It's either truth for everybody or it ain't true for everybody. One or the other. The sun is hot. That's not my truth. That is the truth. See? Two and two is four. That's not my truth. You say, well, I have my truth. I have my truth. You're a nut. I mean, truth, truth. Two plus two is four. You say, well, I really believe it's nine. Help yourself, but that ain't true. <laughs> uh, the, the, the truth is two and two and four. And that's it. And if you was raised all your life believe it's nine, don't, don't get mad at me if you was raised wrong. Two and two is four. Hey, proof. Here's two. Here's two. Two and two is four. That's what I teach Frankie. Uh, 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 how many is this, Frankie? Uh, if I take away one, how many is that? And uh, he's learning his, his, his onesies and his twosies. And uh, add, subtract, multiply, and divide. He ain't got that far yet. But anyway, uh, that's it, y'all. That's it. Jesus Christ saves you and gives you the new birth. Uh, one, let me just give you this little thought, and I'm done. The last thing is, Jesus will someday judge the world. All judgment is committed to the Son. So Jesus will someday judge the world. And guess what? This book will someday judge the world. It sure will. Every word. We're giving a count. Man, we're giving a count of every word in this book. If you didn't get it read through this year, determine. You're going to start January 1st and read it through. I've done finished mine. I do my New Testament three times every year. My Old Testament one time. And I'm, I'm done finished. I'm in read Ecclesiastes. Study, okay, study the future. Uh, he just got out of the hospital. Be nice to him. He had a rough week. 
Amen. Somebody said uh, he done so good on that CD, the devil tried to kill him. But uh, anyway, uh, we're done. We'll take just a little quick break, make our visitor welcome, and we're fixing to see something amazing here in just a minute. So now's your time to do that. God bless you. Take about a five-minute break, then we'll start the preaching service. Amen. Make everybody feel welcome.